Hello students, how are you all? Welcome to One Page Biology. So in today's video, I will be talking about one of the topics of molecular basis of inheritance, which is nothing but translation. But dear students, this video I will be dividing into two parts, that is translation part one and translation part two. In the initial part, I will be talking about what exactly is translation and what are the things which are important for translation. So let's begin with the video. Let's talk about translation part one. Now as you can see on the screen, dear students, there are some structures which are somewhat grey in colour and you must be wondering what are they. They are coming in and they are going out. At the same time, you can see there is a strand which is there present on the screen. So let me tell you that you are going to understand this as we go ahead with the video dear students. So as we are going to talk about translation in this video, let's try and understand what exactly is translation. Now dear students, can you all see this person is eating food? Now we all eat food which is important for us, for us to survive because we get energy out of it. So we get proteins, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins etc from the food we eat. So dear students, one of the molecules which we get from the food is nothing but proteins. And that's why we get the proteins from the food, our muscles get the proteins uh, from the food we eat ultimately. Now, dear students, have you ever wondered when we talk about the cell, there are so many important proteins also which are formed by the cell. They can be hormones, they can be certain growth factors, they can be enzymes, etc, etc. So how are these proteins being formed by the cell? How is the cell going to form these proteins, dear students? Now, now we all know that this information of proteins inside the cell is mainly present in the DNA, which is nothing but the genetic material of the cell and from the DNA what is formed is RNA so whether it is mRNA, rRNA or tRNA all three RNAs are formed from the DNA and this is mainly by the process of transcription so dear students I have already made the video on transcription if you haven't watched the video please make sure that you watch the video of transcription I have put the i button on the screen. Now, in today's video we are going to talk about how from the RNA the protein is ultimately formed because we know that RNA is formed from DNA so the information is passed from DNA into the RNA and information is of what the information is of the proteins because now from RNA the protein is going to be formed and that means the information which is which has come into RNA is going to get translated in the form of proteins this process of translating the information from RNA is called as translation. So this entire flow of information that is one from DNA into the RNA and from RNA into the proteins is called as central dogma of life dear students wherein the word central dogma it means it's a common principle for every living form whether it is bacteria or plant or animal so every living cell performs these two important processes for the formation of proteins and we all know that proteins are the most important components of every living organism right dear students so let us try and understand what exactly is translation so first of all as we said that the rna is going to help in the formation of proteins the translation process is a very complex process i would say because there are many other things which are also important for the process of translation. Now what do I mean by other things? Dear students, on the screen as you can see, there is something called as mRNA. What is mRNA? What is the full form of mRNA? mRNA stands for messenger RNA. And why is it called the messenger RNA? Because messenger RNA contains the information of proteins which is of nothing but the amino acids because we all know that proteins are made up of amino acids so the information of every amino acid is present inside the mRNA now you may wonder how is this information present the information is present inside a set of three nucleotides 
and a set of three nucleotide is called as a codon. So every codon has got the information of one single amino acid. So the first important thing which is important for translation is mRNA which stands for messenger RNA. Now dear students let me tell you there are certain factors which are also important for translation. Now when I say factors, factors are nothing but small proteins. Factors are nothing but proteins. Now there are three types of factors which are important for translation. That is initiation factors, elongation factors and translation factors. What is initiation factor? Simple from the word itself it means initiation means the beginning or the start of translation. So these proteins, there are certain proteins which are present inside the cell which will help in starting the process of translation, right? Then there are certain elongation factors. What do we mean by elongation? Elongation means the formation of a polypeptide chain. So there are certain proteins which are going to help in the formation of polypeptide chain and that protein, that polypeptide chain is going to be formed on the ribosome, dear students. And then there are certain factors which are known as termination factors which are also important to stop the process of translation, right? So the once the polypeptide chain is completely formed, that is going to be released in the cell. So dear students, please remember these three important factors which are nothing but initiation, elongation and termination factors. I will be talking about them when I come to the mechanism of translation in part 2 video. Now apart from this dear students, we also have there is one particular enzyme which is important for translation. The name of the enzyme is amino acyl tRNA synthetases. Now what is amino acyl tRNA synthetases? Dear students, we know that which RNA is important for uh, translation which helps to bring the amino acids towards the ribosomes I would say. Can you guess it dear students? The answer is yes, it is transfer RNA. So the transfer RNA carries the amino acid or you can say the amino acid attaches to the tRNA. But who helps the amino acid to attach or to bind to tRNA? The answer is the enzyme called as amino acyl tRNA synthetases. Now this enzyme dear students helps the amino acid to bind to the tRNA. Now apart from that we also require the ribosomes which are very very important for translation because the ribosomes are going to move on the mRNA dear students. And these ribosomes, let me tell you, are made up of two subunits, the large subunit and the small subunit. Whereas inside ribosome also there is an RNA. Can you guess which RNA it is? It is ribosomal RNA. Right. So ribosomal RNA helps the mRNA to bind to the ribosome. It helps talking about this ribosome as we know that it is made up of two subunits, the smaller unit and the larger unit and as we can see in the screen that it has got the mRNA which is present or you can say which is sitting inside the ribosome. So during the process of translation the ribosomes are going to move on the mRNA right and basically as you can see inside the ribosome there are three different sites. What are these three sites? the E site, the P site and the A site. What is E site dear students? E site stands for exit site, P, stands, P site stands for peptidyl site and A site stands for amino acyl site. Now what is the role of E site, what is P site and what is A site dear students? I will be explaining you all when we talk about the mechanism of translation in the part 2 of the video. So dear students, I hope you have understood the requirements of translation in the part 1. So in the part 2 video, we will be actually talking about the mechanism of it, how the translation occurs and how the proteins are formed inside the cell. See you all in the next video. Thank you guys. Take care. Hey students, I hope you understood the initial part of translation. If you have understood the video, please like share and subscribe to one page biology and share it with your friends i will be coming with more and more biology related videos for you all at time take care